It is 13.7 degrees in the greenhouse. Outside it's 4 degrees Celsius or 39 degrees outside and 56 inside. Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders. I'm out here in the greenhouse and I'm trying to decide what I'm going to work on today. So let's have a look around the greenhouse and see what needs work. My large forest here, the ground needs cleaning up. You can see all the needles that have fallen off the trees onto the forest floor. That needs cleaning up. I don't want to prune the trees yet. I want to wait until spring when the buds are swelling. That way I can prune back to living buds. If I prune it now in winter, the buds haven't swollen at all. So it's hard to tell, you know, what buds are alive and what ones could possibly be dead. So you don't want to prune back to dead buds. Otherwise you might lose the whole branch. So we'll leave that till later. Um, my juniper here, my $12 juniper, uh, I just want to grow that. Uh, I gave it a good pruning last time. I want it to grow, thicken up, and then I have some major branches to remove on it coming up. My red maple here, the large one, uh, it has this dead top on it, which could be carved back. Uh, there's no urgency for that either. And it also needs pruning. Some of these branches are getting a little long. Maybe that you know, could be a choice for today. The apple tree's done. Here's my silver maple forest. And this one does need pruning. And I think that would be a good one to do today. The forest floor needs clean up. You can see all the leaves and needles and weeds. So I think that's a good tree to clean up. And this one, I think right now it's growing in a seed tray. Again, I think this one is ready to plant all the trees in a pot. So I'll have to find like a mica pot and get this, you know, repotted in spring. But for today, I think I'll work on it. I'll clean it up, prune the trees up, get them ready for their spring repotting. These silver maples in this forest were all started from seeds. I was walking down our street and there's a silver maple on the street and all the maple keys were falling down there, those little helicopters. So I caught a whole bunch of them in midair, put them in my pocket, took them home and planted them. And you can see them in some of the very early videos. Uh, they're just like little maple keys sticking out of the soil. And then they've been growing ever since. So I think, I think they're about five years old, maybe six years old now. I have to go back and check, but they're getting on there in age. Some of them are kind of thickening up pretty good. Um, so this is the front of the planting here. The thicker trees out front getting smaller towards the back. So today I'm going to give them a good pruning and tidy up the landscape. Here is a look at the forest from the front. Yeah, so the largest tree eh, is a little bigger than my pinky, I think. These are forest trees, so forest trees don't have a lot of extreme taper. They have, you know, you want them tapering from thick at the base to thin at the top, but you don't want that exaggerated taper that, you know, a single bonsai by itself can have. Forest trees should be slim. If you go into a forest, you'll see they're all kind of tall and upright with very little taper on the trunk. So that's the look I'm trying to go for with these trees. Is sort of a natural forest image. So that means the canopy on top of these trees has to be fairly compact. You can't have a widespreading canopy otherwise it shades out all the surrounding neighbor trees. So in the canopy I'm after ramification, keeping it compact and keeping some taper in the trunk so it's not... I don't want reverse taper. If I get too many branches at the top you could get some thickening up top and you might lose the taper on the trunk so if that happens then you know sometimes you've got to do cut them back start the top growing once again redevelop the top and uh, go from there so at the moment I think the taper is pretty good I've got some branches that divides from one to two here I've got some upright trunks here I'll just prune out a middle stub there and I've got some budding so I'll prune these back now so this, this one is already being trimmed here 
and it's died back so this is a good set of buds and it's the best set of buds I have closest to this division so I'll just prune the dead bit off the top and here I've got buds up here and another set down here so I'll prune this back to those so I divide it comes up it divides from one to two here and then this one divides from one to two again and this one divides from one to kind of three there so I'll take the, will I? I want to develop this bud so it kind of spreads out the crown. So I'm going to, I'll take the dead bit off the top. I'm going to rub out this one bud here like that. So this one will develop. Uh, I won't prune it back because I kind of want this as the apex of my tree. And I think, you know, there's a dead stub here I can take away. But I think everything else is looking good on that tree. The lower branches on the main tree are also fine. I'll just take a stub off here. This one's fine. So yeah, everything's looking good on that tree. I'll prune this tree on the end here next. It's very tall and whippy. Um, so I'm looking for buds that are closer to my divisions here. I'm going to take out, there's a stub in the center here. I can remove that like that. And then I have buds either side here, which are pretty close to the trunk. And I have a better set up here, so I'll prune it back to here. Just the head of those buds. And then behind, I have buds way back here, but then I have another set here, so I'll prune just above those. Down low, I have my trunk comes up, it divides from one to two here. I want something kind of either coming forward or fanning out from the main trunk of the tree, so these ones will kind of grow left and right. These ones would be too high, so I have another set way back here, so I'll prune it right back to here. So I should get a branch coming forward. I've got a little shoot here. I'm going to take that out. It doesn't need to be there. I've got one coming straight out the front of the tree. Uh, I think... I mean, it's all right there. I'll print it off short to here. I've got another one coming out the back here. It, it divides from one to two here. I'll take out the middle piece. And then I don't want the one growing beside the trunk here. I want it fanning out, so I'll cut off the one leg of that, and then I'll shorten it back to there. Out the back, I have a trunk growing right beside the main trunk of the tree, if you can see that. Let's get a close-up. There's a close-up of this part. So this branch goes right vertical. It's hugging the other trunk. It's kind of a cool feature, but um, something you don't see all that often in a forest. But, you know, maybe it's something to keep. So I I'm going to get rid of the one that crosses the trunk and keep the one on the outside. So here I go. Like that. So now it kind of comes up and then fans out a bit. I think that'll look good. So here's the top of the tree again. I'll just prune a stub out here. And then this one I'll prune back to here. So that takes care of that tree. Here's a look at the forest now with two of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two of the nine trees pruned. I'll continue pruning up the rest of the trees in the forest. Then we'll come back and have a look at it. I am all finished the pruning, so here's what I took off today. So not a lot, just kind of, yeah, some long uh, extensions off the branches. Let's have a look at the forest now. Here is a look at the forest now. So I, I think it looks quite natural. Um, you know, the trunks are quite straight on the trees, but that's what you see in nature and forests, uh, at least around here. All the trees in the forest are straight trunks like that. So there's kind of what it looks like. So now I have a lot of cleanup on the forest floor. I've got all those leaves and debris and weeds to clean up. I'm cleaning up the forest floor with the tweezers here, putting it in my box of compost. So these trees, I got the seeds from a native silver maple. I caught them in midair. 
But even though the parent tree is, you know, a pure silver maple, it gets yellow fall colors on the leaves. This, the, all these seedlings are a cross. They cross easily with the native red maple. So in fall, instead of getting all yellow leaves on these trees, I get colors. I get oranges and reds and yellows. So it's a little more colorful than just having like a, a pure silver maple. If you want a pure silver maple, I'd have to take cuttings off the tree and clone it. So, but I'm very happy with these. I think, you know, for free trees, you know, you just grab the seeds out of midair, plant them. Uh, and then years later, you, you end up with a nice little forest. And every year this forest is looking more miniature and it's, the trees are looking better. They, they still look a little like seedlings, but they're starting to make that transition where they're beginning to look more like mature trees, even though they're not very old. But they're starting to get those, you know, characteristics, bark, branching, taper, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, so I think, you know, I'll be putting this in a bonsai pot this spring, repotting it, root pruning them all. And that'll be another big step forward for these trees and this forest. It'll be very exciting. I have got all the leaves, pine needles, and debris off the forest floor. So now, all that I have left to do is weed. So I'll pull all these weeds out with the tweezers. All right, here I go. So I try and get them out by the roots. Some you can pull with your hand. Got the roots. The silver maple is one of the smaller leaved native trees. Uh, the red maple also has fairly small leaves. So they, they can be quite nice as a bonsai. Um, the leaves will come out a little larger in spring, but then, you know, after the first pruning kind of maybe late spring or early summer, the next set of leaves comes out pretty small and it, they look pretty good in miniature. And they're excellent trees for training. I mean, you can grow these the same as a Japanese maple and when you get good at growing a native tree that costs you nothing then you can think about getting Japanese maples and work on those. There's no point buying expensive trees while you're kind of teaching yourself to take care of them. You might as well learn on free inexpensive trees. Train yourself to take care of them. You know, get your overwintering techniques down having a location to overwinter the trees and you know, teaching yourself the discipline of growing bonsai. And once you've mastered all those skills, then you get fancier trees. But, you know, I would suggest if you can start off with free seedlings, go for it. Now, I will be repotting this in spring, so it's not that critical. I get every weed out, but I might as well have it looking neat over the winter. And it's possible I could reuse a lot of this soil too. I mean, it's good soil. We'll see. I definitely want to root prune these trees though. Uh, root pruning gives you that nice flare at the base of the tree. If you get a nice radial root system, you get that nice flare at the base of the tree and it looks really, it looks more mature and stable and planted. It's not just doesn't look like a stick in a pot. It looks like a tree that's grown, a mature tree. The forest floor is all cleaned up. Let's fly in now and have a look at it. I think the silver maple forest is developing really well. It's time now for today's update. 
Today's update is my nightshade vine. I'm going to give it a pruning and clean it up. My nightshade vine flowered really nicely last fall. It got all these purple flowers on it. And then the flowers change to berries and the berries come out a green color. Then they turn to yellow, then orange, and then finally red. Quite attractive. Uh, this is just a common weed that grows in Ontario here. I'm trying it out as a bonsai and so far I'm liking the results. I think it's got some good characteristics to it. So we'll just keep developing it into the future. I've got my nightshade planted in a pot made by David from the Toronto Bonsai Society. The flowers and the berries go really nice with the color of the pot. So I think it's a good combination. So I'm going to start by pruning down these long leaders and I, I'm looking for buds. You can see there's leaf buds. They're fairly visible. So I'm looking for ones that fan outwards. So I think I'll prune this right here like that. You can tell it's a good living stem because it's green on the inside here. This one, I think maybe I've got to shorten it more. It's a little too straight. If I look at it from the front, it's it's very thick and straight and vigorous. So yeah, I'm going to take it back to here. Big prune there. That'll look much better. Take this dead bit off there. Okay, the next long one here, I'm, I'm going to prune that back. It's kind of crossing. I'm wondering, do I even need it? Probably not. Although I think this branch is dead. It does have a bud at the base, which is alive. This one is also dead. You can tell by the color of it. And it's, there's no green when you prune it hollow inside but this is alive so I think I have some good buds at the base so I will keep part of this branch I'll prune it off to here so it's good to have a backup you know in case this part of the branch dies off now I have a stub in here I can prune back like that I've got a long one growing up the back here. I'll prune it to a branch that fans outwards here. Like that. I've got one coming up here. I This looks dead on the top. I'm going to try pruning it here, see if it's alive, this part of the branch. Uh, no, it's not. I'll try pruning back to here. That is alive. It's green on top. I'll prune the stub away here. Like that. Uh, out the back, I think this one is dead. I'll just prune the tip off. Yes, it is. I did get some dye back on this vine, which I guess is understandable. It is a weed, <laughs> not a tree. But there, so I prune that back to living tissue. Uh, I also have some branches coming up here, which I'm not sure if these ones are alive. They look... Uh, I don't know. Let me uh, show you a close-up of it. Here's a close-up, and they're a very light tan color. I'll prune the tips here and see if that's alive. No, that's not alive. Check this one. That one is alive, it's green. So that means this whole branch is alive. I'll prune a stub off here. Yeah, it's green, it's alive, that's good. This one, there's a little dead one off to the side, but I'm hoping this part is alive. Let me prune the tip off here. No, that's dead. Let me prune back further. No, dead. Prune back further, no, still dead. So, I'm going to prune it here. No, it's still dead. Still dead. Pruning it flush and now I get some green. It's alive there. So this part is alive. The other branch was dead. So let's do the same here. Let's see. That's dead. That's dead. Dead. 
dead, prune back to here, dead, prune back to here, dead. So we gotta prune it right back. Still dead, there's no green there at all. So this whole branch could be dead. Let me prune here. Yeah, dead. No green. No green. No green. So I've got to come right back to the base here. There, I've got green now. So the stub is alive. So it should shoot up branches from this area. So that's too bad. I will clean up. There's a bit of a stub here. Ah, maybe I'll leave it. There might be, you know, some living buds here. I'll leave that. Uh, so then I've got to come to the back here. There's some branches that are quite tall. So I'll prune this one to here. And this one to the back. This bud facing the back. Dead branch here I can prune off. There's a stub in here I can prune back. Like that. And I think, well, let's check this one. It's dead. Dead. Alive. Okay. Now, there's a stump off here. I prune that back like that. Yeah. Okay, so everything on the tree is now living. It's all living branches. It's interesting, you know. Um, I kind of lost a lot of branches off this side, but... You know, you just have to go with what happens. Uh, there are going to be areas that die back and you redesign the tree in the future to kind of suit the present style. So next, I'll prune away all these suckers at the base of the tree. All right, here I go. I just prune them away at the base, the root base there. And I should pull away all this moss from the base of the roots so it doesn't climb up the trunk. And you can kind of see the root spread too. So several people have told me these are fairly long living vines. Uh, some people have had these growing in their backyard for many, many, like decades. <laughs> so I don't think there's a problem with it dying, you know, in three or four years like most weeds. I think it'll keep growing into the future. At least I hope. It's a bit of an experiment, this. As I said before, you know, some you play around with plants, experiment with them, and some you get winners and some you get losers. Some you spend a lot of time on and then they suddenly die or sucker back. And But, you know, I think it's worth a try and if it works out, it works out. And I must say, I've enjoyed growing this over the years, seeing it flower and get berries and Thicken up at the base, which is exciting, getting good roots. Okay, now I need to prune away some of these suckers. And these really sucker from the base, so I'm trying to keep the suckers cut back so all the strength goes into the upper part of the tree. Otherwise, the suckers would take over and maybe the top of the tree would die off, which often happens with these kind of more shrubby, shrubby kind of plants as they want to keep suckering from the base. I guess that's the way the plant renews itself. The thicker, older trunks die off and they're replaced with new branches or new trunks and that. So, so I want to prevent that. And this, I want to keep my old trunk growing really well and vigorous prune off all these little suckers that come up. I just have a little bit of weeding to do and this tree will be all pruned and cleaned up. Well, tree, vine, will be all pruned, cleaned up, ready for spring. Here's a look at what I took off the nightshade vine. Some long branches, some small ones, the suckers, picked a bit of moss off. Let's fly in now and have a look at the nightshade.
I am going to apply a bit of rubber cement to my cuts just so it doesn't dry back. Because I think these nightshade vines, they can uh, dry back from the wounds, dry out from the wounds. And I think sealing will help that keep every, all the branches alive and growing well. I'm getting glue all over my tree here. <laughs> One of the disadvantages of rubber cement is it, it kind of uh, is sticky and leaves all these little stringies. But that's okay. They, they rub off. I guess the theme today was free trees. Both my silver maple and my nightshade vine here didn't cost me a penny. The silver maples were grown from seeds from a tree in the neighborhood and the nightshade vine was dug up from my backyard. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>